Okay, it's 27th just of June, just to midnight, and in a previous episode you'd have seen us sitting out a thunderstorm in a bay, well we went back to that bay because it was such a beautiful bay, and now we're sitting out a thunderstorm. <laughs> so, oh there you go, there's a bit of fork lightning out to the north of us, so we're sitting north-south onto a swell that's flowing west to east and so it's pretty uncomfortable we're just rolling from side to side there's a couple of thunder cells just to the west of us that are moving through so Gary and I are up keeping an eye on things oh, I just got dripped on from above there and a couple of really good flashes of fork lightning that's for sure but yeah, you could probably hear that that was the thunder Anyway, we're just riding it out. Our option is to head over towards those lights. We were in behind an island, but we thought we'd just take our time making a decision like that because it's a little bit of effort to pick up the snubber off the anchor and get the anchor in before we do move. So, just see how we go. I'll just take you in and I'll show you. There's a couple of cells on the radar. We've got the radar up and spinning and there we go there you can see it so top of the screen is south bottom is north and all that red are the cells out to the north and west of us and each of those rings is six miles so they're inside that three mile ring and then out to just inside the six mile ring. I'll just zoom in a little bit. There you go there. So a couple of good cells going through there and a couple more out to the west going through the bay. But just a bit sloppy, uncomfortable, but we're safe. We're okay. There you go, our ride has now smoothed out a little bit because we've had a wind change with that cell going through and we're now head into the swell. What a difference it makes. So it's now two o'clock in the morning and those cells moved past but it looked like there's another one to the south now coming, either coming our way or just moving across but it's flashing continuously. Actually feels like it's getting a wincy bit closer, but we shall see. But hopefully you can see that all right. Might be a long night. Get to daylight, I think, and we'll bring the anchor up and go and move somewhere and get asleep. Sorry, people. Uh, we should have got some video footage this morning, but man. We ended up dragging the anchor chain at about five o'clock. I didn't wake up. Gary had to wake me up. And then Fiona and Gary had to get out on the foredeck and get the snubber and the anchor in. And then we headed off, but we were fast heading for the shore. So sorry we didn't get it, but this was the weather afterwards. All right, so today, after that horrible night of thunderstorms and having to move the boat, we went to put the water maker on and the periodic maintenance message came up. And when we consult the manual on that, we've got a few things to do. I just changed the filters, so that was already done. And we've got to go down and check on the seawater filter for the water coming into the unit, just to check that that's all nice and clear. And then apparently we have to do an oil change on the high pressure pump, which I've got no idea what to do. So I've sent a message off to the water maker uh, manufacturer just to ask them what the type of oil is and um, how um, we access that. Anyway, we'll go down into the lazarette and we will show you where the strainer is. So there it is there. There's the seawater strainer there. So pipe comes around here. That's the outlet to the low pressure pump. And here's the seawater coming in. So we'll just close it that off so we've shut down the seawater coming in and then we're going to have to work out how to take that top off um, it's 
little bit difficult access, but we'll work it out and then we'll take the filter out and give it a good old clip. Okay, well that's a really dumb installation. So there's the cap that comes off the top, nice rubber seal under it, that all looks good. But it is impossible to get the strainer out because it's been fitted way under there instead of back here a little bit. So now we're going to have to take these two clamps off here. And that's probably all actually. If I take those two clamps off, I can probably bend it enough out here to get it out. But sorry, I think it's a bit dumb. Alright, so let's undo these. And let's hope this comes off relatively easily. Okay, need a little bit more exercise to get it off. Careful there not to do any damage to the main unit. There we go. Okay. As expected there will be some water coming out. Oh yep. Yeah. And it is too tight in there. Now it's fixed onto the wall. That's useful. Okay, I'm going to have to take these two screws out down here now as well. Stand by. Yeah. Working, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> You're on holiday though. Exactly. So you couldn't help yourself, could you? No. I left you sitting there, yep. but you just had to come out and, and get involved. So we've worked out, it's a 10mm nut on the end. So I'm going to take those two nuts off, then that gets the filter off the bracket on the wall. And then we can take it out and clean it. Okay. Might be smaller. Okay. Funny, eh? Because you read the book and you know what the book says? No. Check the seawater strainer and clean. It's such a simple sentence. And you think, that'll be easy. Oh, look, there's a nut, bolt, and looks like a spring washer, is it? So it I, would have, I would have put the spring washers on the nut side myself. Yeah, it reads very simply, but in reality, it's not so simple. It's a Kiwi farmer at yeah, work. Astounding. This is valuable footage, Gary. Thank you. Kiwi farmer at work. Hey? So, filter wise, you could probably give that a. I'll give it a clean. Give it a clean. Here we go, let's yeah. have a look. There is the filter and I mean it looks okay but we'll obviously give it a clean a little bit of rust in there mate I've lost the nut anyway um, I'm, okay so I had a film over it eh? it was, wasn't yep. blocked in any way but it definitely had a little bit of a film over it so it's all been nicely cleaned up and we've got the filter housing cover back on looking good and then we're just going to attach that back to the bulkhead or the wall with the, what was it Gaz? M8 wasn't M8. it? Yep. Yep, M8 nut and bolt and Gary's put a little cloth down on the bottom there look to capture any nuts that might get dropped and then we attach the hose back to that open seacock and I think we're ready to go aren't we Gary? Hopefully, it just doesn't take me a while to get a nut back on Okay, so there's the system. We tested it. We managed to get it flowing. First time it didn't work because we had an airlock from the seawater valve, so we had to loosen the top of the filter, and that let water through, and then it operated okay, but we're in water we don't want to use, so now we're giving it a back flush, and we're ready to go. Maintenance number one, or 101, that's right, done on the water maker. And there, is the back flush operating. We're out of here. Goodbye, Budva. And on this journey, we pick up a family that got a camper van in Trieste up by Italy, drove for two days to spend half a day with us on Teresa's birthday, and then they're headed out to Italy via Albania. Amazing people. So after a tumultuous night, as no doubt Mark's recorded for you, we are leaving this bay, our little anchorage that's always our safety anchorage. Couldn't see out there at all, but quite exciting. Um, we're leaving this now to go around to another bay. And we've got Gary at the helm, 
and he is doing the anchor uplift with Mark so I can be on camera because my services are not needed and there is Mark doing the anchor I think it's always good if Mark's doing this side of it because then he can get a feel for what it's like sometimes I feel when I'm doing it he's not quite sure what the hell I'm doing so he's just directing him to go that way he can't see your hand Mark Thank you. and do you want him to go a bit forward he wants to go forward we're going backwards it's quite an art in doing the anchor sometimes it goes really nice and other times you're all over the show so okay. so film it look at that that's where it's come from great and put that on oh, it, really, it really swings eh? yeah it does if it's why if you're you, in a stop like that and then you, you stop it doing that yeah not sure um and the stuff came off nice don't want too much any words no, about really. that it's complicated it is a eh? it's more complicated than what you think it is i love it though that mark's done that then he understands what it's like that's temperature um, up near 150 yeah so what i normally do is just go up to a thousand rpm yes so now do it on the digital hey see the digital oh yeah, yeah. What's that? the grab bag what's that with an epub and a probably should shouldn't should, we yeah should probably should yeah we probably should can you bring it sweetie now we're on the boat sorry <laughs> Where are we going, Gav? Well, Mark's dreaming of fishing. <laughs> but I'm going to take the boat for a drive. <laughs> oh, 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 that hurts. Oh, that hurts. And what is all the advice we've had so far? Go fishing after four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it, Gary? Two. Oh, dear. Oh, well, we'll give it our best shot, won't we? So we're just going back to get the grab bag that, in all the excitement, we forgot. That is where we're going fishing, off that point. And we are after sea bass, sea bass and Dorado. Dorado. We shall see. Because the red snapper I think is too small for Mark to be able to shoot properly. <laughs> okay, so here we are, we've found our spot. We have our anchor out, so we are holding nice and tight. My safety man is standing by ready but the question is do i take the camera with me as well no not yet so we don't start start with that what if we got a first kill well, we'll and we missed it well no if you get a first kill then we'll film you bring it back to the boat okay so we're thinking keep all hands focused on the focused, focused on, on the, the gun yeah otherwise we're either going to lose the gun or lose the camera or both <laughs> when I madly reach out <laughs> for one fish. or the other. Okay, all right, okay. Excellent idea. So here we have Great White Hunter, Mark Rammel, searching for dinner. First time out, using the spear gun. Optimistically loaded a bucket to take the big fish. We shall see. We're out here, we've been out here for about 20 minutes now, just waiting for Mark to come back up again. Not sure if he's actually got anything at the moment. I uh, so, thought I saw a flash of something around him. Here he is, on the surface. Okay. Looks like he might have a fish or two tied to him. We'll see how we get on. That is a pretty cool sunset. Let's just get a nice shot here of gears in it. Thanks, so you're roaming oh. the antic. There's a kiwi ensign hanging into a Montenegrin sunset. Isn't that beautiful, Miriam? Yeah, it's gorgeous. The sun just dips okay. below the horizon. Oh, only problem is there's an Australian boat in front of us. Kind of spoils the shot, really, doesn't it? <laughs> Never mind. Such is life. Such is life. Just had a slight glitch here. 
Not quite sure what the boys were doing with trying to get the tender up. No, we were straightening up the chain. But um, he was heading out there. Straightening the train. I'm oh, straightening the train. So, um, <laughs> had a, had a, had a, because I've been playing with it earlier, but he got a, we had a kink and I had to sort out. Here, would you like to hold this? Oh, you're holding that. Yeah, no, 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 you're right. You're That's good, I can do both. Yeah. <laughs> you guys going to let me know when you're ready or what? Where are Hi, you? <laughs> Hello. Yes. <laughs> Mary Ann's got the camera. <laughs> right. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. That is a gorgeous sunset anyway. Where are you, Marky? He's way out the top. I'm up here. Well, hello. <laughs> I'm directing operations up here. All right. Now, did you check okay, the thing? Are you ready? Up you go. Did you check the thingies? Yes, Here we yeah. check the thingies. Are you check. going to grab that so that you can throw it to Mark? No. Nope. Nope. You getting ready, Marky, to get the cord? What are you doing? Kissel Pistol? No, go away. Kissel Pistol? No. Kissel Pistol? No. <laughs> oh, go away. Cuddle go away. Puddle? Go away. <laughs> no, go away. Otherwise, you'll pull me under. I would not do that. Of course you would, Mark, because you love that. Oh, that. Tweedles, how can yeah. you say that? Right, now. Just so you know, this is all on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be a nuisance the whole time? <laughs> hey? <laughs> So you could almost say there's a damsel in distress, couldn't you? That we're saving. However, there happens to be a, there happens to be a prince with him, <laughs> with her. <laughs> so we are saving a damsel in distress, but there is a prince or a knight <laughs> aboard. All right. It, Okay, yep, we'll stay here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so he's going to jump in the water and try and fix this problem. Looks like they've got something around the propeller. 
so Blue Caves just north of Bugava and to the south of the Gulf of Kator and quite something, a bit of guano there from all the bats See it hanging down. Right or wrong, I'd have no interest in swimming in there. Big cave, isn't it? <laughs> we have to stop and work again. We will. Is mum, what, 52 or 53? How old? How old's mum? 45! No! Your mum is not 45. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Right, see you guys. Bye nice bye. to see Thank ya. You. Happy Thanks birthday, Therese. See ya. Nice. Thanks for coming. Bye. It's been bye. so lovely. Amazing. Bye, Marianne. Nice yeah. to meet you. Bye, Shay. See you in the morning. Okay. See you guys. So <laughs> see you, Marky. Oh, are you going to give the life jackets to? No, we'll sort them when we bring them back. Are you sure? Yeah. We'll okay. See you guys. Have a look at the lighthouse. Night Rider. Hello. We could see you before we we could hear you before we could see you. Oh, could you? Yep. All good? Yeah, great. Fun. They all did okay? Oh, they're good. Yeah, they really appreciated it. And and they're all very good. Okay, we're off to our next bay, left Lutichka. And now we're just heading towards the Gulf of Kator. What's that? Loostica. Loostica, apparently. And Gary and I headed off this morning. Mrs. R was in bed, so she got an abrupt awakening with the chain coming into the chain locker. But anyway, we're just heading into this bay up here. And of course, the one boat out here would have to be right across the entry to it. So we're going to go around the back of it, or stern of it, and then pop in and have a look. And it looks to me like the bay won't be very good for us, but we'll go and have a look anyway. Lovely day, just a little bit of slop, 400 mil, a bit more than that by the look of it. And um, after lunch it's going to die off to being a beautiful evening again. We shall see. Not the prettiest of vessels, but does the job. Just come into this little bay just to see whether or not it would be nice to be able to anchor here and tie off so we can have breakfast. See, it but it starts getting quite still in here though, eh? You know, yeah. If you're facing that way, yeah. tied off and with the anchor out, it would be the bay would be okay, but it's, you know, this is not for us. But we are just with looking, there's just really no rock to tie off the so the only one that we were thinking of that you could tie off to would be that one, that first one there. That's why we went in a bit closer, but it just won't work. And then his lordship said and suggested, and I can't believe it, that we could tie off to those rocks up there on the bank. Well, those of you who have followed our journey will know what happened the last time he decided to do that. Yes, yes. I'm not sure if it's he's a slow learner or... Mm. Ever the optimist. Not sure. Very nice bay at the entrance to the Gulf of Couture. Boats everywhere. Summer is on us. Here's a big tourist boat coming in. And we've been passing, even though it was quite choppy, coming up the coast. 
day trip boats one after the other and I am sure they said to the people coming to hire their boats no it'll be beautiful out there well it wasn't they were bouncing and banging against every wave the waves are all about two seconds apart so believe me it was a rough ride but anyway we've got this guy coming up here in his ferry and I suspect he's not very impressed with where we are would be my suspicion because we're kind of blocking the entrance to this area here which is a restaurant and I'm wondering if that's the wharf over there but no doubt we'll find out he will tell us if he's not happy he doesn't know us he gets too annoyed and they shouted us to leave I suppose we might have to see what he does eh Okay, so no, he's not annoyed. What he's doing is transferring people from that big boat to the little boat. So off the front, they have a gangway. And it looks like some people are going to be climbing from the one boat to the other. Interesting. Okay, we'll take all that back. What he's done is picked up that red boy. So they are going to buoy there, I suspect, so that people can go for a swim in this beautiful bay we we're going to potentially get thunderstorms coming through you can see in the distance there there's a bit of a roll cloud ahead of something arriving and pretty big gusts going through I don't know if you can see that dust blowing from left to right um, nice and clear out there there were some thunderstorms down there about five o'clock this morning um, but yep, that wind is coming in now. Just turn around, you'll be able Stay to hear it. Up now. No, that wind goes to the coast, that goes to the coast. Oh, yep, cool, gotcha. All right, so we're just going to start the engines now in case we need them. So in case you didn't hear that, we'll start the engines now in case we need them. But definitely gusts coming across the bay, and there's a cell or something up there that looks like it wants to dump. So let's see where it dumps. Gus coming through here, you can see it. It's probably alright, it's probably okay. I'll, I'll let it do its. Fuck. I think I've seen it turn Where's the. Where is the. Let's just have a look here. We're getting pretty big gusts coming through. Yep, our thing's up there, so good idea. Just. Right, so here we are, just bringing the nose around into the wind. Oh, that's not yeah. Man, that arrived in a rush. It did, it was real fast. That's it, now, now it's coming out here. It should sit there, hopefully. Get, get the rudder off. Yeah. What do you reckon that was, 40 knots? Yeah. Okay, so that's the gust out of the bottom. Now it'll be interesting to see with a cloud hanging down out the bottom of it up there struggling to keep the moisture in we could well get a dump but not yet <laughs> okay so it started raining now the majority of the cell has moved past and it's gone to the south and we can see the lightning and that down there but interestingly on here we started the engines and it was a pretty big gust and we're in quite shallow water look only three and a half meters because it shallows right out where we anchored but it's good holding but so far we're at the extent of the chain now and we're just sitting there by that southern border of the anchor drag limit and it pulls the nose up into the wind which is quite good so in many respects you're better off just having the engines running in case you need them and let the boat do its thing as long as the anchor is holding and what would have been nice would have been to maybe get the snubber off before that hit you don't always get warning obviously and if we have that off then at any time we can always bring the anchor in and then just get out into deeper water but yeah it's quite controllable probably got up to around 40 knots and there is some reasonably heavy rain coming through and you can see down there there's the water moisture out of the cell above just not being able to be contained and, and coming out 
all very interesting and this time in daylight so we can actually see what's happening now you probably picked up that flash there a couple of cruise boats went up there before they wouldn't have been very happy in that no doubt seen it all before though flash like the ones that go down. Oh, yeah, we should get a bang, anyway. Well, you've got that as thunder, you can hear. The thunder seems to go on for ages. Yes, yeah, so we're pretty sure that catamaran. Oh, there's another good little flash. That catamaran is coming from where we were yesterday, where it was a little bit of a swell coming through. Should be able to hear that. Pretty big cells going over the top, or around us actually, not over us now. But we still get the odd wind gust from them. Won't go into the details of that, we did that in the video the other day. So fingers crossed that yacht will turn up over here and it can be the conductor for the lightning. We're probably looking at dropping anchor there I suspect. That's good, I like that. It's a beautiful conductor. Oh, here we go. That was reasonably close, people. What do you mean close? No, can you hear it? <laughs> Oh, it means it's over, basically overhead. You hear that if you see the lightning and you hear the crack at the same time, you know it's on top of you. Mm -hmm.